everyone. Welcome to the 401k Marketing Podcast. Are you ready to be the go-to expert in the retirement plan community? Listen in as we share ideas, resources, and best practices that you can use to professionalize your firm, demonstrate your authority, and earn more 401k business. In this episode, Rebecca Auerhand welcomes Jake Rushton, founder of the 401k Club. He offers coaching and a community to bring advisors together. He calls this the 401k Club. But as Rebecca knows, Jake also has talents that span coaching and public speaking to wealth management and retirement plans. And he has a special interest in helping physicians. So Rebecca, please tell us more about Jake. Hey, Jake, welcome so much to the podcast. We're super excited to have you here today as our special featured guest. Thanks, Rebecca. Excited to be here. Well, I'm hoping, you know, you mentioned in your biography that you have spent in this 401k business since you were 18 years old. So (laughs) that means you have oodles of experience and you were baptized super early into financial (laughs) services. There's got to be a really good story there. Do you mind welcoming everyone to the podcast and sharing that story so they know how accomplished you are and at such a young age? Yeah, oh, I'd love to. That It's kind of funny, that story. I mean, it goes back to my first job, right? I was sitting there in, uh, you know, I was in a call center and we got this meeting invite to go to this 401k thing. And I was like, what's that? That sounds interesting. And I remember sitting through this long one hour presentation and it was all about time value of money and the markets. And, and I just, I left the meeting, not really excited. And, but just, I said, I want my money now. And I didn't do it. And so that was kind of the, the first time that I was introduced to the 401k. And, and ever since then, it's always been something that interests me even though that first meeting was really terrible. And so <laughs> I think what I've tried to do with my career is do the opposite of that to make it something engaging because it was that first you know, investment account that I was introduced to and it was a bad experience. And so I don't wanna have that bad experience for the people that I can impact because it can really make a difference in someone's life and, and the time they get to spend with their families. Oh, I love that. So your first, so you were in this meeting, you liked the concept probably from your econ background, just just thrown. Yeah, I was always interested in the markets. It was always something that, you know, that was back when the, this is how old I am. I, you know, I used to look at the stocks in a newspaper, right? It was like, oh, I'd follow and I get the newspaper to see what it did that week. You know, that's kind of where I grew up, which I can't believe I'm getting that old, but um, it was always intriguing to me. And the 401k was that like, what is this, this thing that all of us hear about in our jobs that some of us take advantage of and some don't, it just, it seemed interesting to me. So you're in this meeting, you have this terrible experience and you don't shut the book on it. You're not like, okay, I know I'm, I'm young, I'm fine. I'm going to go to the casino or <laughs> wherever else. And I'm, I'm going to do it on my own. Instead, you say, wait a minute, there's an opportunity here. I have a chance to change this conversation and then to fix it. So how'd you get into financial services from your cold calling job? So I actually, I went, I finished college. I did an economics degree. I, I was running in college and I just, I wasn't really sure how it was going to pan out because I was trying to become a dentist actually in college. What? So <clears throat> it was really crazy. I wanted to do um, dentistry because I just, I had always been interested in, in the business side of that. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't do the same, you know, uh, sciences path that most of the dentists take. I did the business route, which did not make my science teachers very happy, my <laughs> professors. So it was kind of this, this interesting path I took because I ended up uh, moving. I was in school in Hawaii. I ended up moving back home to apply to different dental schools. And at home is Utah. And I got waitlisted everywhere. And like I couldn't get into the schools. And I started talking to a bunch of other um, people on these wait lists. And they'd been doing it for three or four years. And I thought to myself, do I want to keep doing this, spending thousands of dollars every year, you know, shadowing dentists? What am I getting? How is this going to pan out? Yeah. Luckily, uh, at the time I had had that business background. So I got recruited by E-Trade. And okay. so mm-hmm. right immediately, I kind of pivoted my whole career, my whole future path that I thought I was on track to do and got into the stock market and started to really learn a ton in, um, you know, in, in how to invest and, and questions people had. And it was just, it was something that I didn't expect to have happen, but I, I'm glad that it did. I'm really happy. No regrets. Wow. You know, it's funny about doctors, uh, dentists and doctors and anyone really with like an advanced profession, they, 
the universities and advanced college degrees, um, they teach them so much about the niche. So they go a mile deep and an inch wide. And it's, yeah. you know, their brains are blossoming with all this great dental knowledge, surgery, um, you know, law professions, you could say that as well. And then they come out and a lot of them have aspirations to hang their own shingle and to have start their own practice one day. And they have virtually zero training when it comes to a PL statement, to hiring employees, to being a good manager, to all the nuts and bolts that it takes to actually run a business. So right. in your practice, the retirement plan side, before we jump in, everyone, we are going to talk about the 401k club. <laughs> Don't worry, but I wanted to start here today where we get to know more about Jake and his business. So when you are thinking about how can you make a name for yourself in the 401k side or with helping your, your actual clients who are either 401k or doctors is what you kind of settled in on a niche there. Do you, mm -hmm. how did you kind of, was it your dentistry background? Like, how did you kind of say, Hey, that's, that's where I want to go. It was a combination of a few things, but it definitely, it had to do with kind of my background, knowing that, that, that history of how these people got into their careers, you know, the path they took, yeah. you know, I was in you know, my bachelor's degree was with a bunch of pre-medical and pre-dental students. And so I knew they had no business background. I knew they went right into um, the problem of having a lot of debt. And then they go right into a high tax bracket. And a lot of advisors would kind of stay away from them because they're kind of difficult. I mean, they'd like to understand things. So they really push back hard on, on information you give them. They read every word you send them. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's a very difficult kind of client base. Um, and that I liked, I liked that challenge and I knew that they needed some serious help because they, a lot of times make, they get approached by a lot of bad products and people selling things that sound amazing. And then they end up, you know, not in a good situation. So I knew I wanted to do something to help them. Um, you know, I had been around so many great dentists and doctors, you know, over the years. And I just thought this is, this is something I want to dedicate my time to helping this group of people. That's awesome. So when I have a buddy, what's it called? The doctor who gives you the drugs before you go under. What are they called? Anesthesiologist. Yes. So I have a buddy, his name's Alex. He's an anesthesiologist and he graduated college years after most of us did. Um, I think he told us one day his student, his um, student loan balance was like $350,000, yeah. which is, I mean, that's just overwhelming just to think about. But then he got out of college and a couple of years later, he was making $650,000 a year. Right. Go right so, into the highest tax bracket with his yeah. debt and it's like <laughs> double hit. <laughs> and he was never had ever seen this much money in his life. I mean, he's a kid from a small town like I am. And he's he's living at this like gorgeous penthouse and he's driving this fancy car and we're joking around with them. And he's like, Oh yeah, I spend all of it. It's like, I don't know what to do with it. Like I just spend, and we're in our young tw middle, middle, upper twenties. Actually we must've been in our upper twenties at this point. So do you ever bump into those sort of circumstances in your, in your day to day? Oh it, yeah. All the time. As far as, yeah, well, they, they have that scenario where they're just making a lot of money. They're not sure what to do with it. It, and it's fascinating because you can meet two different doctors that have the same income, but have a very different financial future, right? They, some that are still scared to buy a new car and are driving a 1980, whatever Honda civic. And, mm -hmm. and, and you talk to them and they're, they're, they could retire tomorrow, but they don't think they can, they have no confidence in it. And then you have the ones that go all out the second they get the first check and spend every dime and are not prepared and really have no cash and can't even fund their full 401k. Mm -hmm. So it is fascinating the different, I guess, results that can come from just those early decisions when they come out of medical school. I mean, it can impact their family for generations if they do it mm -hmm. right. If they don't, it's, I mean, they'll have a fun time, but mm -hmm. they'll be, they'll be working a long time as well. Uh, well, since that time, Alex now has two kids and a loving wife and don't worry, she's wrangled him <laughs> right back in. He's, he's no longer out there. Bachelor Alex having a grand old time. He's, he's saving and has responsibilities. It's so he probably met an advisor like you who was like, Hey buds, let's, let's sit down and talk about this. Let's make some smart financial decisions here. Yeah. And it, it's more, it's funny. It's more about the confidence when they start to understand what to do. And then it's to build up their confidence that they're doing the right thing. And they know kind of the path they're taking as far as when they're going to start to phase out of work a little bit. It depends on if they own their own practice, you know, if they work for a bigger hospital system. I mean, the healthcare system is really interesting. And you think, 
well, these doctors are making too much, but it, honestly, a lot of situations you would be amazed at how little they are making for the time they put in oh, and yeah. the history of all the work, they effort, they got to that point. It's, it's an interesting, um, very, very, when you say just work with physicians, it's a huge niche. I mean, I would even want to narrow down more than that into certain groups because it's very different. All of them have different needs. Well, you set this next question up beautifully niche markets. So let's say I'm a listener here today on the 401k podcast, and I have a dual wealth management business and retirement plan business, and I'm trying to make a decision. You know, Do I keep doing both sides of the house? Do I move towards one or the other? Neither answer is wrong. Uh, or do I try and channelize a little more and find a niche? Tell us, what are your thoughts around that? You know, that is a great question because I think a lot of advisors struggle with that. They get this excitement when they start to see the opportunity that a 401k could provide, right? And they start seeing these lists of 5,500s and they're like, wow, there's plans everywhere I look. This, this will be easy. It'll have so much to do. And then they start to get a couple and then they want to pick up some individual clients and all of a sudden their time is gone. They're completely gone and they can't go out and find new plans. Some of them will take longer. And, and they just, they become kind of a generalist and they don't become really that great at any of those things. They just, they're trying to just survive. Um, and, and I don't think that's a good model. And I think that's what the firm I'm with now, we kind of struggled with that before I got here because they were focused on individuals and the front K was such a good tax strategy for the individuals, which was a lot of physicians that the front K became its own department because there was just too much extra work that had to go into the front K that's not normally done just in a you know one hour meeting in our office with one person. So um, I think it's very two di very two different very different ch like channels of of business. It can be done where you can do both, but you've got to really be smart with who which ones you work with, mm -hmm. and not try to go too big too fast because you'll you'll end up just hating your life. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I think some of the most successful firms divide that up and maybe come together you know on the investment side and really work. As, as one, when we talk about how we invest in, in models and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But as far as service goes, it's two very different situations that need to be ironed out and, and written and, and really procedures figured out. So don't spread yourself too thin. <clears throat> No. find something that's exciting and passionate and then stick to it. And then, I don't know, what are your thoughts? Maybe hire a teammate who could focus on the other side if, if that aspect of the business starts to grow or ramp up. I think that is going to be more and more common to bring a, and someone else into your group to manage the 401k from a service side of things, from a relationship side of things. You can still be the lead advisor and kind of bring in the plans and, and kind of be the go-to for the bigger questions and concerns. But if you start to pick up too many plans, you'll be, you'll have no time, right? The servicing of a 401k, depending on how you set that up and the expectations you set with your clients, really to determine how much time you're going to have to find new clients and take care of the individuals. So I am seeing a lot of practices kind of divide that up and as well as in the health and health insurance side of things, they're adding a lot of 401k departments to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And even when I got into 401k, I think you know, five or six years ago when that happened, the trend was you want to have your 401k all by itself, right? You didn't want to have private wealth management as a part of that team. And that's changed completely. Now companies are expecting you to have both. So it's good to have those connected, but I would still keep them separate from a day to day of who does those. So if you're a, if you, as a, let's say you have three team members, instead of just having a title where each team member is, I'm just going to use general terms here, a financial advisor, maybe each title of the team member would say retirement plan relationship consultant. And then it would say private wealth management advisor. And the third one could say relationship support. And that could help segregate or uh, divide your team. So everyone knows who to go to when they have specific questions. Exactly. You got to just explain to your clients the process you want them to follow and really help them know who to reach out to. Because if you have them reaching out to you for every little thing, uh, it it'll add up quick on the 401k side, right? And same with the individual side. It's very different. You have a, a lot of different things to pay attention to, a lot of due diligence to do. And if you're not doing that well, you know, you're going to, you're going to hurt yourself in the long run. So you're now, right. Having a good team member with, with titles is good. So now um, 
as I think everyone knows, Jake, you're no stranger in the 401k industry. You're constantly live on LinkedIn. You've got a great podcast, by the way. If anyone has not checked out Jake Rushkin's podcast, please do that after today's show. It is definitely worth uh, many hours of listening. Uh, so please, please, please check that out. And Jake is secretly a lover. I don't know if it's secret anymore, but of <laughs> marketing. <laughs> and he always comes up with really creative, interesting ways of getting getting the word out there on how he can help plan sponsors. Uh, let's back it up a little bit and let's start to talk about some of the ways that you began marketing. Cause no one starts marketing and then they're everywhere. Like that just doesn't happen that way. Yeah. You got to start small and then over time it builds and it builds and it's built. And it's so always changing, you- right? Like that's the thing. Marketing is never going to be the same. It's always yeah. changing. So tell us some of the marketing campaigns that you started with, what your success were, and how those built upon each one of them, because we don't know where our listeners are within their marketing journey. And so we want to help them from the beginning, the middle, and all the way to superstar status. So take us away. Yeah, I think it's a good, uh, looking at the history of what I've done in such a short amount of time to become relevant in the formal case space, because there's a lot of people that have been doing this way longer than me, right? And that's just, I think, the change in our 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 world, like the how we communicate. Social media has made it so easy for you to get yourself out there and to find your voice. And so that's a big thing for me is is I always hope to coach and help advisors think that through and find out what's what's you that's unique. What do you love? What's passionate that, that you can keep up and be consistent with? Because for me, I don't, I'm not a writer, so I I cannot write blog posts. Like that's like the most daunting task for me. Yeah. And so I'm a video guy. Like I'd rather grab my video, my phone and just tell a story, tell us something that happened, share something I learned. That's much easier to me than to try to sit down and write it. And that's, and that's fine. Same with podcasting. I mean, I think that is really, really a big deal right now. And a lot of advisors need to jump on that, but they're jumping on it and trying to copy other ones or trying to be so heavy on the industry topic. Make it something you love. Like it doesn't have to be all about 401ks or have to be all about personal wealth management. Like having a podcast is just getting attention, right? And it's giving and telling, giving people a chance to tell their story and, and people can do other things while they listen to it. So it's, it's the world we live in. We're busy. So I think the biggest thing for those listening that are trying to build out their practice and try to figure out how this marketing game works now, just start, just start by making a goal to either make one video or start a podcast or get a, be a guest on a podcast is even easier than starting one. Or start writing and put it on Medium, put it on LinkedIn. I mean, there's so many ways you can put it out there. And there's so much attention on our phones right now that if you don't start, you'll never have the opportunity to see if someone will follow you. One of my dreams, I haven't been able to do it yet, but one of my dreams is to create a series of memes for the retirement plan industry. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, there's it's it's a whole, yeah, the industry itself is so small when you start to really get to know everybody. I mean when I jumped in, I mean, you were like, I was like, there's no way I'll ever be able to talk to Rebecca. She's like all-star status, but look, we've been able to connect and learn. And this is how great our industry is. It's small enough that you can reach even the biggest stars out there. And that's, they'll, they'll help you. That's the part I'm really enjoying about our industries. We're starting to help each other instead of keeping it all secret and like, Oh, I'm not going to tell you what I did. Mm-hmm. There's enough 401k plans that need our help. Let's start sharing it. Absolutely. This is such a wonderful collaborative industry across the board. And we all know each other from years of working in different companies. If you ever go back, it's always a fun exercise. If you go back on LinkedIn uh, and you pull up whoever you're talking to at, at, before it, and you look at the, the companies that they've worked at, Usually you can figure out who and how they know other people in the industry. You know, you have the connections tab as well that you can click on. And very quickly you find out, oh, you've been best friends with, you know, Tom Clark for X number of years, or you know Jason Roberts super well. And (laughs) there's all these wonderful ways that you can just see thanks to LinkedIn um, and find out who the friends are in the space. Yeah. And even that you can take, take that same concept and relate it to who your target client is. When people, you know, ask an advisor, who's your target? And they say a plan size. And I say, no, no, that's not a target. Pick an industry. And they're like, well, I don't know how to find them. Where? I don't know where they are. Well, look up a couple and you can yeah. find their footprint. Either they're on Facebook. I, I recently got into a big group of dentists 
Mm-hmm. And now I'm way more active on Facebook than I have before because they're all on there and they've yeah. kind of pulled me back into it. That's where they are. They're not on LinkedIn. So you'll, you will figure out your target client and then you can basically stalk them and see kind of where they're hanging out, who they're talking to, where they're commenting, where they're posting and jump in that world, leave this 4k world, go into theirs. I love stock. This is a creepy thing to say, but I love I shouldn't say stalking, looking up people <laughs> online. I love it. Um, you go to, you type in like a regular name, this is an example, and then you can go to images. You can find different images of people over time. You're always going to find a, a, like a cherry image, something that's just like <laughs> hilarious. It's going to be like someone at a, like holding a big trophy fish. It's going to be uh, like a mud runner, you know, one of those like running for charity, tough mudder type things. Yeah, and yeah. they're so fun to find. Cause that's when you start to see the personality of the person you're getting to know. And I, and if, sometimes, you know, if, you, if it's a casual dialogue, you can bring it up and say like, hey, I looked you up in advance and I noticed that you ran the Tough Mudder uh, back in like 2019. You know, that was, how was your experience? And people, they they shine inside. They're like, oh, wow, how'd you know that? Like, thanks, I had such a, and then they tell you this wonderful story. And these are little tidbits that you can use in your conversations to enhance the enhance the conversation. Right. And it goes back to the advisor too, as far as if you want to get yourself out there and get people to know, like, and trust you, Mm -hmm. Google yourself and see what's out there and see what people are going to look up. Because if one of their friends or one of your, your clients refers your name to them, the first thing they do is go to their phone and look you up. So what's going to come up, you better be something that will, you know, help them feel comfortable. It doesn't have to be all 401k or marketing or or, your financial advice, like be you. And people want to do business with you. doesn't matter your firm name. doesn't matter any of that stuff. They're going to figure out if you're a good person, if there's something, someone that they want to do business with. So the more you put out, the more content that's out there, the better chance you have of winning that client. All right. So guys, you heard it, heard it here. Or, uh, Jake Rushkin just said, everyone, open those phones or your Google <laughs> incognito modes and type your name in. See what's out there about you. Page one, page two of Google. If you're curious, page three. And Look then- at images. See what, <laughs> what what is Google pulling up about you? And is it the thing, the story you want people to find? If not, then you better start putting content out. You better start making videos, pictures, written things. Find your voice and get it out there. Love it. All right. Now I think it's a beautiful opportunity to transition. Uh, Jake is the founder of the 401k club, which is a super exciting network within our industry. It's a community of advisors coming together and Jake acts, I believe as their coach and teaches them how they can enhance their sales process. They can get their name out there more and they can build a greater center of influence. So Jake, uh, tell us about the club. Yeah, the club, it's kind of funny how it came to be. You know, when COVID hit, I really took the time to figure out, you know, this personal branding thing. And so I created 401 Jake and that became something that I really enjoyed to do. And I, you know, grew this logo that I put on everything. And now all I do is wear this logo everywhere I go. And I'm, and, um, and I started building courses. I thought there's not really a whole lot of good content to help bring people into this industry. Let's make some courses. And so I started building a couple and I had some advisors test it out and they were all in a different spot. And I kept struggling with what if they're, you know, they're just beginning, they don't know anything about 401k. What if they're you know, really advanced and they, they just need help with marketing or like uh, there's all these different ways to go about that course. And so I kind of went the other route, which usually you have a community after you build courses, but I went right to the community part mm-hmm. and I started to bring together all these people that were reaching out and asking me, how am I doing this and that? And why am I growing my practice so fast? Like, what am I doing different? And so I said, well, I'm going to dedicate some time to this and figure out the technology. It's amazing. Now it's so easy to to bring a community together and put content together to help them. And then really try to get the dialogue going between all of those people in that community. That's the goal of the forum club is, is you have resources. That's a safe place, you know, because Mm -hmm. we used to just go to lunch with wholesalers and that's where we learn new things. Why can't we connect with each other, including the wholesalers, and all have a great discussion all the time? Whenever you have a minute to jump on your phone, you have a question. I've got this client coming up, this prospect. What should I do in this situation? Mm -hmm. I had a great call with an advisor last, you know, a couple of days ago about cash balance plans. And he was trying to figure out a strategy to kind of really bring that up with this group and see if it would be a good fit. He'd never really done many of them. That's the whole point of the club is just to really bring our community together so that we can all get better. And in the end, the end result is 
the participants, the people, the families inside of these 401ks will benefit in the long run by doing this. Well, I remember when I was at LPL, this is a long time ago now, uh, we created study groups and we grouped different advisors together based on the size of their practice. And we made sure to make sure it was geographically spread out. So no one was in anyone's backyard. So there was no conflict of interest. Everyone could be friends. They could openly share. And these study groups blossomed. People were begging to get in to the to different again everything was kind of divided based on your size of your practice the number of um, teammates you had so you weren't talking with uh, you know a, a multi-billion dollar shop and like a, a brand new 401k advisor like they were all kind of peers amongst themselves yeah. and they they all the advisors basically turned into friends you see them now at conferences and they're like cheersing each other and like hey and then most of them you know have kind awesome. of you know some of them have still with their primary the home office back in the day some of them have migrated since then but the relationships have stayed and if you meet them today you'll even find that they share different or had or did share different business, like, oh, hey, I'm based out of, and I'm just going to pick a random city. I'm based out of Atlanta. I got introduced to a company because our director of HR moved to Seattle. That's not really going to be like, that's not really a great plan for us. It's we're based here, <laughs> we're comfortable, but I have a person in my study group who's in Seattle and you should meet them. And then they work out, you know, a business arrangement and it works beautiful. So there's so many additional benefits that come out of forming relationships and having friends in our industry. And yeah. You're doing I, that. Well, that's, I mean, that's the thing is even, I even mix it up with really experienced people with inexperienced people and even wholesalers and other people around the front case, I've tried to be inclusive of everyone without, you know, feeling like you're getting sold to. It's more like what's really going on and what are we seeing on the ground and then helping these wholesalers understand what we on the front lines, you know, with these clients are hearing, but you're right. Like getting people over that, you know, acquaintance, we would meet somebody at a conference. It's never really to that degree of like, Hey, I got a client up there. Can you help them? Like that's where we want to get to where it's this network that we know we're all the best at what we do. And we might have a different style and different voice and different focus. Hopefully our niche is really ironed out and we know who we help. Um, but that's that being said, when I even talk to great, you know, great advisors, that have huge books of business. They tell me, I don't want to deal with doctors. So if I get one, I'm going to send them your way. Like that's that. happening now. So, that. and I didn't form the group. I actually have a lot of advisors here in, in Utah that are in the club as well. And yeah. they're, they're competitors to my, me, but I actually enjoy seeing them win more plans. Like I, mm-hmm. I'm really more pumped about helping other advisors win and more than I am chasing my own plans, which doesn't make my wife too happy from, you know, <laughs> paid, but she, you know, she sees that it, it brings me a lot of joy to like see other people succeed. And so I think that's the, the inner coach in me of just really having fun with it and, and making a bigger impact. So how often, you know, tell us more about the club. How often do you get together? What are some of the, um, are the topics kind of free flow or is there an agenda if I wanted to pop in or pop out? Um, how do I get more involved? Yeah. So there's, there's kind of a, a, there's weekly events. So every Friday we have what's called the expert sesh and you've been on that. So we have a guest come in. Sometimes they're in the industry. Sometimes they're totally out of it and have nothing to do with 401k, but they teach us something that we could use in our world. Um, and then I, I use that um, and I drop that content. So if you miss it, it's every Friday at, at 11 Mountain. We drop it into the, the club, which has a whole portal. You know, it's I use a system called Kajabi and they put all the videos, all the content, all the training. So I drop a monthly training. We have a weekly meeting. I have a every Tuesday we have a clubhouse where we have a follow up discussion about the week before um, just, you know, on clubhouse talking about it. Um, every quarter we have a different webinar that they can invite clients to that's very focused on something to help them kind of get an introduction to. Um, and then I do monthly one-on-one coaching calls. So if they want to jump on and just blast away questions. So there's a lot to it on an ongoing basis, but then all the content that we ever do that any means we have, it's all recorded and it's put into the club so they can listen anytime. So every week it just grows. All the content just keeps growing. That's so great. Now, if I yeah. uh, hope you don't mind, but uh, if is there a cost associated with this? You know, you got me on the hook here. Tell me. Yeah. So I, I set it at thirty-seven dollars a month. I've I had so many people reaching out to me. I said I got to figure out how to get people to take it serious enough to show up, but not so expensive. They're like, "Whoa, that's crazy!" Because there's a lot of programs out there. You know, a lot of coaching that's like in the thousands, and it's just it's a big investment. And I think that investment sometimes is worth it. 
this is more of an ongoing, I want you to pay attention, 37 bucks, get in there. It gives me the chance to step away from what I would be doing with my clients to focus on helping the club members. And um, I'm not trying to grow it to, you know, thousands of people. It's very small group. I want to know each one of them pretty well. And I go through each of their, um, you know, their foundation of where I can find them online and I give them tips and ideas. And I try to bring as much value as I can to them. It's honestly, I wake up every morning excited to figure out what can I do to help my club members today? Oh, you know, I stayed up late last night, putting together a map. I'm, I'm trying to get it all on my website because I want to drive more business their way. And some of them are in a spot with compliance mm -hmm. and maybe just not comfort level of putting out their own content yet that I want to put out content and drive business their way. And so I'm really trying to make it as valuable as I can. The end goal is to help them all win more plans and do those plans correctly. Nice. I love it. All right. Well, um, it, let's just get out your crystal ball for a moment. If, uh, if I'm a retirement plan advisor, happy growing business, and I'm thinking about adding one new marketing idea to my 2021 marketing plan, what is it? I would say it, it needs to be one of those three things I said, Fine, like getting started on putting yourself out there, putting more content out. So from a marketing standpoint, really trust that your personal brand is going to be what is the most valuable long-term and starting to build that brand, whether that's you making a video once a week, whether that's you being a guest on a podcast once a month, just set a goal to get yourself out there. That's content that will be on social media where all the attention is and stop focusing so much on, on trying to trick the SEO algorithm or paying thousands of dollars for that and putting yourself out there so that where people are looking to spend their time, they can start to find you. That will help you as you go and start to engage with those target clients. Then they can look and see a little more about you because you've already put all the content out. So just start. That's my thing. Either you're going to be a writer, you're going to be on audio, or you're going to be making videos. One of those three should be something you can start with and make a goal to be consistent because that's the biggest thing. Don't give up after three times if no one's listening. My YouTube channel is, I think I have like 30 subscribers. It's, it's tiny. Like I get no views there, but my podcast is in the hundreds. Right. And I don't, I don't know what that difference is. Cause like it's the same content, but you just don't know who's watching and who's listening. So you just have to start and trust that over the long period of time, you'll get better at your craft of telling your story and building up your personal brand. Love it. That's a um, lot. I don't know. That wasn't very precise on like one thing, but <laughs> that was great. I think that was uh, all right. So Jake, if I want to get a hold of you, um, how do I contact you? Easiest thing. I'm on LinkedIn, probably the most of any other place. Um, so probably start there. Otherwise you can go to 41 club.com um, um, and connect with me there. Uh, but yeah, definitely LinkedIn is, is my, you'll get in touch with me the easiest there. And I send out a lot of voicemail messages through the DM there to you. And so I would say get on LinkedIn and spend time there. Awesome. All right. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining today's podcast uh, with special guest, Jake Rushkin of the 401k club. Uh, appreciate everyone listening in. Uh, make sure to subscribe below and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to today's 401k marketing podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of our guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of 401k marketing. The content has been available for informational and educational purposes only. We hope you enjoyed.